Welcome to our class, Financial Accounting. Uh, this information is going to be sent again online so that um, those who are not here, they can look at something. Uh, our opening thought in this particular session is record keeping is a minimum legal requirement. That is clear? Yes. And it looks like if there was no need for records, then certain jobs wouldn't be there. One of them is the accountant's job. They call the accountants the, the gatekeeper. So the accountant is there to help the company to keep financial information and to meet what we call financial obligations. Okay? So today we want to appreciate that and um, this topic is very important. Sometimes people underestimate it, I think students underestimate it, but we need to give it the due attention. So what are some of the things that we're supposed to look at today? We are going to appreciate the stages in your accounting cycle. Next time when you go for your interview, somebody might ask you where do you start from in uh, your accounting. You need to be very clear about that. And then we are going to appreciate business transactions, the identification of source documents, analyzing the same. And um, I think we're going to carry this particular discussion over into um, our double entry. Uh, and then we are going to focus on the major day books and then we're going to close. If there'll be need for me to type something, I'll surely do that. But um, by the time that we close, I'm going to leave you with a quiz so that you can uh, keep yourself busy before it is Tuesday. So for the Tuesday uh, session, I'm likely to send something on double entry online. I just wanted to say that the students who are not able to make it physically, they should be diligent enough to follow through these online lectures and you should be telling me when, once you're done so that um, we don't act like we're in the traditional <laughs> we need to be able to state that we are done so that i can send you more information is that okay yes. yeah good so let us proceed and focus here there's something wrong here already maybe i need to tie this we're going to look at the accounting cycle. If you can see something, I think it's time to write. The basic accounting cycle. So where do you start from? Um, we start our accounting cycle in basic terms from the business transactions. Eh? A business transaction is a transaction that involves an exchange. Uh, allow me to go to, to this particular statement here. A business transaction is a transaction that involves an exchange of goods or what? Services for immediate payment or a promise to pay. It's as basic as that. It is as simple as that. So when you go to ShopRite, and you get your your goods that you want to buy from there and you go to the counter a business transaction is taking place there and that business transaction is called uh, a cash transaction you not come out unless you are so <laughs> so courageous you know but you know some people don't know that they've got what you call it some people don't know that they've got um, they have got uh, reputation huh? So they do all kinds of wrong moves. They pull all kinds of wrong, wrong moves to, to, to get rid of the small reputation that they have. So what we're saying is, uh, that's a business transaction. Can you please, you can finish your, your draft there. So we have got business transaction, BT, stands for business transaction. Then there is... Uh, what we call uh, D books, also known as the books of prime entry. Now, I wish, of course, somebody was here, but still we're going to send these works to them. 
the day books this is the initial place where you record your business transactions all right mm -hmm. so on the business transaction uh, trans transaction documents uh, we record business transactions but the information or the data on the business transactions we take it we put it on the day books so that we can come up with it you know accounts I'm going to be in trouble if I don't charge some of these some of these phones they require to be charged they need to be charged okay I think I can use my computer okay so <coughs> We can even switch off a bit so that uh, it charges fast. Right, so from the day books we go to the general ledger. Your general ledger is defined as um, a summary of uh, financial affairs of an entity. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. The summary, our general ledger is a summary of the financial affairs of an entity. So by the time you are done, you would have written a lot of things. <laughs> yes. Okay, so but you don't have to worry, we're going to share with you. So you jot down in shorthand. Eh? Then there is also what we call trial balance. You continue writing, but of course you do it in shorthand. The trial balance is simply a list of ledger account balances. And we have got an in, uh, some interesting issues there because we are likely to deal with, um, we are supposed to deal with correction of errors via the trial balance. That, that's when things become even more interesting. That's when things become even more interesting. The trial balance is an arithmetic test of your double entry accuracy. All right? The word trial means what? Test. I think I've had people say I've passed through trials and what? Yes. <laughs> Temptations. <Yes>. Yeah. So, <laughs> you see, that, that, that they're simply saying that where I've been, I don't want to be again. I don't want to go there again. So from the trial balance, you get on to the financial statements. So our financial statements are simply uh, reports that indicate to us the financial performance and the financial position of uh, a business. So these are five basic steps of your accounting cycle. The traditional accountants, of course, will bring in the issues of journalizing, eh? but that, I think, for our syllabus sake, it may not be relevant because we appreciate the fact that there are systems nowadays so these issues of generalizing once you know you enter you key in information in your day books it updates your general ledger even your trial balance even the potential draft financial statements are updated so these issues of saying let's generalize we shall learn about double entry very soon so we don't need to waste too much time on that so allow me again to progress i want now to again remind us a business transaction is a transaction which involves an exchange of what goods or services and I think what we are just from looking at the accounting cycle shows us an overview of the fundamental steps involved in preparing what financial statements okay financial statements I was trying to use some strong language there so you don't have to worry about that okay so again you can look at this from that point of view you have got source documents all right then you have got the day books themselves you've got the general ledger then you've got the trial balance now initially you have got a draft trial balance eh? and i wanted to say that it is wrong for one person to prepare the finances it is wrong it's like going for an operation alone if you're a doctor and we have heard that people have died in the process you know can't it's impossible uh, anyway maybe some people would insist the thing is that you need to have someone to provide oversight eh? uh, corrections so no matter how good you are as an accountant there's a possibility that you left out some things therefore you start from the draft then when the auditors come they help us to get to the final and then we come up with the financials all right and then we we can now proceed okay so let's now progress to the next part when you're dealing with the source document analysis 
you are dealing with bookkeeping accounting, eh? Mm -hmm. So s from source documents to day books, we are bookkeepers. And they say, say, where does accounting begin from? Accounting begins from the general art ledger. That's the reason why, that's the reason why you need a qualified person to manage your books. Uh, I think when we say qualified, perhaps we can talk about it in inverted commas. We like thinking about a, an experienced person, someone who knows what they're doing. Eh? We don't want to put a novice. <laughs> we don't want to put a novice, all right? To be in charge of our books. We just don't want that. I think that does, does not help us. Okay. How long does it take to become a chartered accountant? You have to save for about four to five years in terms of learning in Zambia. And then afterwards, you're going to have to spend another seven years under the supervision of some people. How long? So if, you, if, you, if you're going to finish your studies in seven years, another seven years, that's 14 years. Are you understanding that? That's 14 years. Before you can be... A, a, a practicing accountant, practicing. You can get your, what do you call it? The uh, practicing certificate. I don't get it. Mm. So. Congratulations, you don't have to worry about those things. But you can get a job. <laughs> yes, jo a job you can get, there's no problem. Jobs you can get. We're talking about turning your, your paper into a trade, okay. whereby you can have your own office, your own practice. Oh, okay. mm, that's what we're talking about. Mm, so it takes a bit of time. Eh? Why? Because of the politics. It's somehow political. And I think the young accountants, they don't like that idea. But so many people have said so many things about it and nothing seems to change. Allow me to progress to the next uh, point which says registration of source documents in the day books. When you register your source documents in the day books, you're still doing what? bookkeeping accounting then after you have done that you go to the general art ledger now in our class we like saying the totals in the day books should be what extracted and posted to the what general ledger we talked about the general ledger as being what a summary of the financial affairs of an entity is that okay mm -hmm. yeah when you Populate your GL and you are satisfied. You can extract a trial balance. The first trial balance that you extract is known as the draft. You have it, eh? This one comes before what? Adjustments. This one comes before adjustments. And then the final trial balance comes after adjustments. After adjustments. I want to talk about a period in our case. We're looking at uh, how many months? I think 12, eh? Mm, but you can extract the accounts for one month, so you don't have to, to be very rigid on yourself. After you have done your final trial balance, you deal with uh, financial statements. So financial statements, again, deals with um, presentation of information. So here we are in accounting, eh? So where does accounting begin from? from the general age. Let us not forget. Accounting begins from the general age. So I'm going to send these quakes to our respective WhatsApp platforms so that uh, next time when I meet our students, we go forward. Eh? It will be double entry. And there's some interesting aspects to that. Still writing? Okay. Wow, interesting. We have got a lot of work to do. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, let's now proceed to the types of business transactions that we're likely to grapple with. So when we say cash transaction, in this transaction, the goods or services will have to be paid for immediately. Eh? Yes. When we demand for them, when there's a demand, payment will be done. 
immediately. So in a cash transaction, in short, payment is made now in form of what? So what constitutes your, your cash transaction? Notes and coins, that's cash, mm -hmm. checks, cards. Nowadays we've got cards, eh? When you go to shop right and you, for, you, you run short on your cash, you want to think that you have got your card on you, eh? Yes. Otherwise, there will be a serious imbalance. You know, some people have got a reputation. So, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want your neighbor to help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how proud we are. We don't want to ask for help. Okay, so, in a cash transaction, payment is made now in form of what? Cash, mm -hmm. checks, cards, mm -hmm. and transfers. We, 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 therefore, using a single column, cash book, in this training all right anyway i want us to consider this fact i think when those guys were in the uh, which which class was that it's supposed to be there for the principles of accounts class hey eh? they used to talk about the two column cash book do you know what the two column cash book is and the other friend who does not know the two column cash book would, would what shake they will shake at that. But in this class, we don't entertain those thoughts of two column cash book, what have you. Um, what they were referring to when they said two column cash book, they were talking about you should have a column for cash and bank. Yes. So when you make payment, where are you getting the money from? From, from the cash at hand or from the bank? That's what they meant. But in this class, we'll just be considering all these, whether you're dealing with cash, uh, in your hands, checks and the like. We'll be thinking about just one thing is taking place your cash asset is what reducing eh? mm -hmm. yes next what else you have credit transaction simply means the transaction which involves an exchange but in this case payment is made later eh? there's a promise to pay so of course if you promise to pay it means that you have got a liability for instance if you owe someone it means that you're not supposed to die before you pay <laughs> before you pay <laughs> or your estate can pay uh, we don't want to go through your estate uh, we, you know because the creditors the first thing they have to say is my condolences and then the next thing is that where is my money mm -hmm. yeah all right let's proceed cash transactions would directly affect the cash asset in hand or at the bank and therefore uh, in most cases we find that cash transactions eh, uh, they're not complicated to deal with, hey? They're not mm -hmm. complex. In fact, if we were to take the route of cash accounting, then there wouldn't be need for many positions in accounting. Because mm -hmm. you remember there's a position called credit control manager. Mm -hmm. That person is responsible for what? For ensuring that we minimize our what? irrecoverable debts. Now, just imagine that uh, we stop giving goods on credit or services on credit. What would be the job of the credit control manager? There would be nothing. It's like <laughs> telling your, your bus driver to say, I think this business does not make sense for me. I want to pack all my buses. An intelligent bus driver will not say, boss, go ahead. They will say, ah, 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 ah. That is going to affect my office, my mobile office, the one that I misbehave with on the road. <laughs> Stopping anyhow. Let's progress to credit transactions very important so before credit transactions um uh before we record tr credit transactions we need to think about the following impact eh? a credit transaction will give rise to or will give rise to yes if you are buying on credit you have a payable then if you are selling on credit you have a receivable what are we saying if this was not there would have less work. In fact, our syllabus would shrink because when you talk about irrecoverable debts, what are we dealing with? Credit what? Transactions. Okay. So I just wanted to say in this case, banks take this particular issue seriously because eh? mm -hmm. banks are the ones who are into too much credit. Mm -hmm. When the bank gives you a loan, that is a credit facility which you need to pay back. What does the bank assume? The one who's getting our money will not die before they finish. But you talked about uh, estate, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, sometimes the estate is not there, especially when you have got some relatives. 
who are very ruthless. They will grab property. But before, and they're supposed to get the date. Ah, anyway, nowadays things are changing. But I think that in those days, I'm sure they, they, they're going to find the lawyers, eh? They're going to be met with brand end. Let's progress. Now, I want us to go to source documents. I think when we started our accounting cycle, we dealt with um, business transactions, right? Mm -hmm. I said that uh, this is a starting point. When you receive a receipt, when you're buying something for the company, eh, what do they tell you? You need to keep the what? The receipt. Yeah, if you're buying, let's say, sour <laughs> for your company, you think mm -hmm. that sour, you might buy bad sour. Yeah, the sour that is also sour. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> keep the receipt so that uh, if we find that the sour is bad, we can it's easily bad. what? Because the first question, they, those guys, they are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. They will ask you, is, in fact, they can suspect to say, you know, we buy these goods from our suppliers, but we are not the only customers. Mm -hmm. So where is your receipt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and if you fail to produce one, they will call for their guides to say, you know, we have got enough trouble trying to manage theft in this store. So this person wants to steal from us, thinking that we are stupid. So let us remember some of these points. Okay, let's proceed. Source documents. These initiates the bookkeeping process. Source documents record daily business transactions. I think source documents also facilitate analysis, recording and posting of business transactions in the day books, right? The source document, I wanted to say, acting like a lawyer can serve as evidence of a business contract in a litigation what procedure you don't want to appear before the judge without evidence mm -hmm. so what our accountants are supposed to do is to open files eh? yes. so that in case there is a query in the near future we should not look stupid it's very easy to look stupid <laughs> when certain things are not in place. <laughs> we have heard of people who have ended up being arrested when they took their friends to the courts. Eh? Yes. yes. The judge might say, this is an abuse of the judicial process. Do you know how many cases I have in my office there for you to abuse the judicial process? Because there are so many people who want justice, you know? Mm -hmm. So you find that there's a maybe hundreds of cases which needs to be attended to they keep on being postponed and so when you go with a fake case a case that has got no grounds they'll question your standing you know <laughs> i like the way they put it the lawyers eh? they don't that he or she does not have a standing just know that your evidence might be very weak it might not fly in the face of the judge i, I want us to proceed and this work is going to be given to you all right so can you please um bring out some of the source documents that you might know which source documents do you know and what does the source document tell us let's go okay. it's your time now to say something yes source documents. Mm, which source documents do you know The one that you know, you tell us, and then you tell us what, it, what the meaning of the, info, uh, the data or the information on the source document. Okay, I'll start for you. An invoice. Good. What does it tell us? An invoice shows us the price. Mm -hmm. Or the quotation. Mm -hmm. It shows us the value of the goods that you are demanding for. I mean that you are paying for rather. Yeah, that's correct. All right, let's not trouble you too much. This is just starting, eh? So we also have got a receipt, eh? What does the receipt tell us? It's proof of what? Payment, not purchase, because we have got credit <laughs> purchase as well. But you understand that as we go through, eh? So let's proceed now. And um, so this point is very important. It's impossible to recognize all the source what documents. So on the next slide, we refresh our memory with common source documents and their meaning. And of course, I'm going to use some kind of uh, basic procurement what, system. The procurement officers are the ones who are supposed to know well these things. Eh? You know, because if you don't know your source document, 
you'll be looking for what is not there. You know, you'll be looking for what is not there. For instance, if you bought goods on what on cash basis, all right, you bought goods on cash basis, and then you are just given a what a receipt, and your boss says go and look for the invoice, and you decide to say let's look for the inv invoice. What will happen before you analyze? You'll be looking for something that is not. Someone who went in clean in the, <laughs> in the storage, and they'll come up with dust. Why? Because they just don't understand what the boss is saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to give us a basic procurement um, system. Just take, for instance, you go and you want to buy bond paper. Before you buy bond paper, you need to establish um, the need for it. It's just like in a house. If you want to buy a meal, meal what should happen first? The last thing medium you should have depleted eh? to certain levels uh, and they like saying don't tell your friends at 24 hours <laughs> have mercy <laughs> don't tell, tell your friends that actually there's no medium you at 24 hours give them some days eh? yes. so that they can uh, get a bunch there's a lot of corruption there was, we already have corruption in our country so if you tell a public servant officer that there's no medium you at 24 hours what will happen they'll get something from the from the client <laughs> So we don't want that. All right, let's progress. Uh, so the first thing that you do when you want to acquire goods or services within your organization, you may have to fill in what is known as the purchase what? Requisition. What is the purchase requisition? This is a record of an approved expense. It is a budget control tool. Very important point. So before we buy bond pay buying, there must be a purchase requisition that must be filled and a supervisor of a department or your boss must what approve because your boss attended the budget what meeting where they know to say we can't exceed certain levels when it comes to requisitions this is how we manage our monies remember what you spend daily how you spend your money daily will determine how much you're going to spend at the end of the year so if there are no controls what will happen you overspend. You'll be like these state world countries that are always what spending more than what they can. Mm. Mm. So we have got a very big problem, like in our country. Uh, I don't know. We we all want to relax, but we want our needs to be what met. So which is <laughs> very tricky. It's very difficult. Okay, I want us to proceed. So once the purchase requisition is approved, we move on to the next stage. If um, you're going to buy bond paper, you can always make a verbal inquiry. Pick up your phone, call, uh, what are some of these guys who are selling stationery? Book World, Book Art. There's also Grey Matter and other suppliers of what? Stationery. You need to inquire. Do you have what we are looking for? Okay, I hope that you're getting something, all right? At least you should be writing the names of the source documents, eh? Because I know that you may not catch up on the explanation side because maybe the speed is too too much. But please, you should ask your questions. We are not clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, if you are going to buy something that is uh, complex, that you cannot easily explain, what should happen? You need to send a written what? Letter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because... You know, to say, by the time I finish explaining what I need, the other person on the other side would have forgotten and they'll supply us with the wrong thing. I hope that you can see that. So when you send your letter of inquiry, when you ask verbally, the supplier who is in need of business can respond with what? A quotation. What is a quotation? I said initially that many people don't know these source documents. They use them. <laughs> But they don't know what they mean. <laughs> so, a quotation simply means, from our class at least, eh? a written what? Offer of available goods or services. You're now offering. Eh? Mm -hmm. At this stage, at quotation stage, you're offering, you know, in business, what do you call it? Business law. Eh? When you are sending a quotation to your client, you are as good as someone who is displaying what? Goods. You're, say, you're inviting someone to treat. Eh? It's an invitation to treat. It is a commercial temptation, <laughs> so to speak. 
All right, so um, quotations. Uh, in practice, uh, you're likely to get about three quotations, all right? To minimize uh, chances of fraud. Eh? We don't want uh, to be supplied by our own members of staff. You know what these guys do, eh? Yeah. How do people become rich? When they know that, uh, let's say, government is in need of bond paper, they will go and uh, create a company. Mm -hmm. They will go and create a company and start supplying the government or start, start supplying themselves at exorbitant what prices super normal profits you just see your neighbor building a very nice house and you'll be wondering where are we getting it wrong <laughs> but you don't have to compare yourself yeah sometimes that money is not clean most of the times the money is not what clean okay progress Purchase order, when you are given a quotation, you may want to respond uh, to a favorable quotation. I think in Zambia, many times, small entrepreneurs would go with the cost. Hey, the person who gives us the lowest cost is the one to buy from. But what did you say there? We need to agree that sometimes cheap is what? Expensive, yes. So purchase order is a demand for the supply of what? Quoted goods or services it is advisable to send a purchase order with a, a particular what quotation so that uh, you buy goods at a particular price please remember that these quotations they do expire mm -hmm. yes i think you understand that let's progress to the next part so when you send in a purchase order the supplier may ask you to fill in a sales order this is simply proof of secured what purchase i call it proof of secured purchase because there is a possibility that you can change your mind as a customer, right? Mm -hmm. Between the time you order goods and the time you actually want a supply to those goods. So fill in a sales order so that uh, you tie yourself to a deal so that you know to say, we can't order the goods from another place because if we do that, we are going to put the supplier at a loss. So sales order, it's a proof of secured purchase. It's a proof of commitment to a what? To a purchase. So once uh, the supplier you know, gets ready to send you the goods uh, as the goods leave their warehouse or their premises, the supplier is going to um, register the, the the departure of the goods eh, in a on, a on a special document known as um, goods dispatch note GDN this is the evidence this particular document is the evidence of transfer of goods from the suppliers and i think it can be used for um stock control Hello? stock control right uh yeah because um you have some of these store managers what do you call them stores managers eh? they need to be put under good surveillance otherwise <laughs> they'll be they'll be they'll be removing more than is necessary yeah. And therefore you find shortages under their nose and they'll say I don't know what happened you know it's only in Zambia where things can go missing and people say I don't know what happened and they still keep their jobs <laughs> me, me, the only explanation there is that it was a what it was an internal what, job what do you call it an internal deal something which involved a lot of people including managers how did goods get, go missing and there was no forced entry. I went to audit some one of these uh, companies. I think it's an NGO. Uh, I think they they dealt with whatever. I think it's computers or something. They they, they, they are specialized in uh, supplying computers at a cheap price to to vulnerable schools, so that uh, they can be retrace, increase retrace in the, in the villages and the rural areas. So one time computers went missing. And the people who were guarding those computers still kept their jobs. So you wonder to see what is happening here. Mm? At least your, your children are my children. That that is the that is the that is the narrative in Africa. So if you fire me, I'm going to complain too much that the gods will be upset with you. <laughs> okay, so let's progress. So from the goods dispatch note, when the goods are received on the other end by the customer there has to be evidence that goods were received so you might be asked to sign what we call a goods received what not 
this is evidence of reception of ordered goods by the customer and then um, uh, I think there can also be an aspect of what goods delivered in hotel mm -hmm. yes so if you want as a supplier you can make your customer to sign a goods delivery not so once you have supplied your clients not your clients but your customers so we're dealing with goods right mm -hmm. you're in a place now to demand that payment be what made so if they pay you cash you can issue a what a receipt we said a receipt is a proof of what payment not purchase it's a very important point to take note of that difference eh? because we also have what we call credit what purchases in some cases the client may pay using what a check eh? so what is a check a written what instruction to your bank you are the account holder in this case so you're instructing your bank to do what transfer money from your account to the account of the supply you understand that the only way we can transfer money to a customer is when there's a what? A demand for what? A refund. Do you understand that? It is possible. But in most cases, who are we paying? Suppliers. Suppliers. Very important. You know, in interpreting this information, students under the exam pressure, they make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> they end up saying that this means that at, at customers are taking long to pay us. How can you say? <laughs> How can you say? How can you say such kind of things? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a clear evidence that some people were partying during during study time. They're just partying, yeah. They're just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's progress to the next one. So we are almost there. Uh, if goods are not going to be paid for there and then, then you have got a right. To issue, I mean, to issue an invoice, yes, as a supplier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, after some time, of course. Um, and so I, I, I highlighted this because these are very important source documents. An invoice is a formal request for payment. It normally follows the transfer of what? Goods, right? When you supply, mm -hmm. you earn, you know, when do you earn your money? When you make a supply. When you earn your supply, uh, when you make a supply, so you earn your money, so you're in a position now to demand, mm, demand. Although the landlords, they do, they do it upfront. When you just jump in their house first day, they'll say, well, uh, my friends, my friends, receive in advance. Mm. I think I should also be receiving in advance." Okay, let us progress to the next part, which is the performer invoice. So in some cases. You may pay for the goods upfront eh? before delivery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you may want a document that you'd use to for that you want to use for accounting purposes, posting transactions in your system. You may demand or ask for what you call a performer what invoice. This is an invoice requested when payment precedes what order. When you just want to receive a document out of formality is very important because then you could complete your what your your posting in the what in the in the books of accounts i think that uh, many people do it many accountants do it when they send someone to buy goods in town they'll ask to say, they'll tell them to say please ask for what an invoice mm -hmm. even if you're buying on cash basis still ask for what an invoice because i want to use that invoice number to complete my what posting in the books of accounts so it's called a proforma what mm -hmm. can i just say this is an invoice issued out of formality eh? it's mm -hmm. a formality invoice it's not needed it is not needed it is only needed for what accounting what purposes for bookkeeping purposes otherwise you can still make do with what the receipt eh? mm -hmm. next a debit note a debit note is a formal request for a credit note so when you oversupply or when you overcharge your client, they can request that you reduce the amount on the invoice by issuing a what? A debit note. So this is a customer's document actually. So when you issue a debit note, the supplier may respond with a credit what? A credit note and we describe a credit note as a negative what? 
invoice. Are you there? A credit note is a negative what? Invoice. It is that document that allows the client or that rather the supplier uses to reduce the full amount on the invoice or part of the amount on the invoice. Very important points. Okay, I'm also feeling tired. But I've got another class very soon. So this day I think I need to be eating five fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I've heard of some people who can't do that in the morning. What is she mistake? You can't be, you can't be oh, But not when you're driving and your life is at stake. <laughs> the body knows how to, when to relax. <laughs> not when there's danger. <laughs> when there's danger, it doesn't matter how much she might have eaten. You'll be wide awake. <laughs> yeah. All right, so as, as you're writing, I would like also to make some progress. There's a statement. A statement is simply a formal request to set on paid invoices is a document that has got un, un, unpaid invoices eh? mm -hmm. that you send as a reminder to your to your customers uh, that they should make good uh, before it's too late remittance advice this is a document that the customer sends to a supplier indicating uh, what they're paying for right mm -hmm. so a remittance advice is a document sent with a payment it indicates which invoices are being settled by your payment, your check that you have sent. Then the bank deposit slip is a record of cash deposited in a bank account. All right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I don't think that uh, we are, you know, bad. In training, uh, we did these things. Okay. You are taking down some notes, huh? Yes. Okay, so let us see if we can proceed from there and um, I hope that you're getting one or two things, eh? Yes. Mm. Because we don't want to be talking to ourselves. This, this information is for those who are going to pass, as we're not going to go to that room. Now let us now go, so today we're looking at the two steps in... Um, in our accounting cycle, we started with um, the source documents. Now we are moving on to another place, which is called the day books. Eh? Mm -hmm. So our day books are also known as what? Books of what? Mm -hmm. Original entry. These day books, they record cash and credit transactions. Simply list of what? Cre uh, business transactions. By order of dates and time. Eh? saves the day books they save as a primary register of what source what documents so when we record information on the source documents initially we record that in the day what day books but you know some accountants like jumping the gun they'll go straight to the what trial balance so which ste steps would you have jumped you'd have jumped to the general agent you have jumped to the trial balance itself uh, yeah, you'd have jumped the day books and also the, the, the general ledger, which is not good. So let us remember the essence of this. The day books also minimize errors made in the general ledger. Eh? Mm -hmm. They minimize errors. Even the amount of information in the general ledger will minimize because information is summarized from the day books all right and then day books also completes the bookkeeping aspect of accounting now if you're going to be a full-fledged accountant you need to um, be good at both bookkeeping and what accounting there are some people who do not appreciate some of those things so let us now look at the basic fundamental day books that we are likely to grapple with in this class before you sell you must buy eh? so which one is that the purchase is what day book the purchases day book records invoices received from suppliers 
I hope that's clear. Mm -hmm. I think by now you know what invoices are now, so I don't think there'll be a struggle there. The purchaser's returns day book, on the other hand, records what? Credit what? Credit what's received from suppliers. I wanted to say that uh, the opposite of purchases is not sales, eh? It is purchases returns. <laughs> Some people don't understand it. The opposite of purchases is not sales in our class, eh? The opposite of purchases is purchases returns. Because if you go straight to sales, you'll be making a mistake because there's also what we call sales what returns. This means that when you make a purchase, it should be recorded. The issue of, you know, the, the, the purchases being returned is a different matter altogether. So it's very important for us to remember, before you go to sales, please, remember purchases what? Returns. Mm. Remember. Because uh, you know that in your sales, goods are going outside, eh? Mm -hmm. But also in your purchases, returns, goods are also going what? Outside. But which one is directly related to a purchase? It's the purchases, returns. So we can't say that, no, the sales is the opposite of purchases, no. I think in this case, we want to be a bit detailed, eh? We want to be a bit detailed. You know, I was telling someone who was just doing FRA just in the morning. Myself, I specialize in FRA, audit and FA. Uh, some subjects must be left for their owners. Like FA. FA is for the accountant. Because FA is involving. Mm -hmm. It's quite involving. It's quite involving. The FA thing is quite involving. In fact, if somebody is going to be an accountant for a very big organization and they are going to do a good job, they will discover that that is going to be very demanding on them. And just imagine the trouble you would have if you found that the person you are replacing was behind by months, several months. You start from 12 months ago or two years ago. I know it. It's a big challenge. This is the place where we have got backlogs. You have, have you ever heard of backlogs? A mm. place where you know somebody has not been doing their job for the past. For instance, I think we are hearing now that some government departments have not been audited for 10 or so years. Mm -hmm. And when you ask why, there are no clear answers given. There are no clear answers given. When an audit is not very expensive, an audit is not very expensive. All right, let's progress. Sales day book records invoices sent to who? Have you seen now the direction? In this case, we are the ones who are sending to our customers, right? Mm -hmm. And then sales returns day book records what? Credit notes sent to who? Yes, you need to be very clear on that. You need to be very clear on that. I hope that you understand something. Mm -hmm. Now let us go to the next one, the cash book. This is a list of receipts and payments made through the bank, the cash book. Okay? So we're not fascinated about uh, single column <laughs> and double column. You know, our job here is to know what is happening to our cash asset. And then petty cash is the junior cash book. This petty cash is uh, a record of small what? expenses. The word petty simply means small. And then journal means what? That record that is used to record period end adjustments, make correction of errors, and pass unusual what? entries. Okay, I think I was supposed to, to change the numbers here. Yeah? So here there's five. Mm -hmm. Here there is six. And then there's eight. Okay. It's a wonderful day, of course. Now allow me to proceed to something else. Mm -hmm. And that something else is the essence of that capture in the day books. So this is a critical stage in bookkeeping accounting. 
the information capture to determine the credibility of what information remember garbage in garbage out now in the day books uh, analysis we can't avoid discussing the issue of um, VAT, eh? your VAT of sales tax. I think in your syllabus it's called sales tax. So please, when you go home today, don't forget to send us that to record. Eh? I want us to be using the same for some of the questions eh? that we're going to be practicing in our class so that uh, we don't remain behind. Otherwise, uh, this is a doable subject. As long as you people are following through. If I can be sending two, 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 two topics in a week and then we come and do some questions on the, on the weekend, that would be better for you. So that you don't... If I can be sending even three topics, I can be sending three topics and then on, on the weekend we come and consolidate. That would be better for you. Yes. Mm. That means that it is to be possible for you to write in what? In March. In March. So... With the pass, it's possible. Come again? <laughs> it's possible to clear. Yes, as long as... Uh, so let me just say, say something. This is a uh, knowledge level. Knowledge level simply means you just have to remember what you're learning. There isn't much application. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you will be simply required to just make simple sense out of what you can remember. Simple, basic sense out of what you can remember. Like when we say, <laughs> what is a cash book? If you can remember, it's a list of what? Receipts and payments made mm -hmm. through the bank. That's what we need from you. So at this stage, it is actually possible to pass with flying what? Colors. As you go higher, that's where you might be finding some challenges because we don't know how your life is going to pan out because maybe you are also working and there'll be more, yes, because you see, the more we grow up, the more somebody will even call us, ah, now you're a granny. <laughs> I've got more responsibilities and the like. So what we're saying is that right now, there's not enough, a lot of information. So you can pass with flying colors. And you should not accept with the aid of a, an instructor. You should not accept to fail. That should be your standard. That should be your standard. Just imagine, somebody out there who's studying on their own, they're writing in much they're going to pass. It is, it is just a given. We know that this is the reality. So, does it mean that the lecturer and the students are down? That is wrong. So you need to, you need to know that you've got an added advantage. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's progress to the next one. The information captured in the day books will determine the credibility of what? Financial information. Because this is the same information. That, if it has got no errors, that will feed into the financial statements. So we start from here. But we know that there's garbage in, garbage out theory. So if there's some errors in our day books, then it means the financials are also uh, erroneously what? computed and will be misleading users. It's very important for us to understand that we've got a duty to provide reliable information. In fact, anybody can do their accounts, eh? But what is important is to do it in such a way that eh, your accounts can be trusted. Okay, let's progress. In our country, VAT is charged at how much? 16%. I think in the UK, it could still be at 20%. So you'll be seeing different rates that we'll be using in the, in the class. You don't have to say, this is not correct. <laughs> you don't have to say, this is not correct. Okay, so this was some of the information that I had prepared for some kind of a training, which we're yet to effect. So I'll go, I'll jump some slides. And then I'll go to the examples of what the book saying. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, how would your purchases day book look like in Zambia? For instance, on 1st January 2020, you supplied a company, or you were supplied rather goods by a company named AB and what? AB and Company. Yeah, the tax invoice is showing that amount. I mean, the tax invoice number rather is that number there. You can see this one. Yes, the 11450 is the tax invoice number, and then the gross. When we say gross, when we say gross, we are referring to the amount with tax, eh? Mm -hmm. It's 11.6, and then the tax is at 16 percent. When you remove the tax amount from the gross, you'll be getting the net amount, which is how much? 
18,000. Are you able to see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's the same idea that I followed through out there. Now, it so happens uh, that you return some goods that you bought from AB. So you're supposed to register that in the purchases what? Returns what? Day book. And of course you've got, um, you didn't return everything. So you've got that number there, which is the gross, all right? And then you've got 320, and then you've got uh, the net of that. It's the same idea that we follow when you deal with the sales day book. Okay, so you sold, I was just using some of these names, shop left. Uh, now notice that in this particular case, the invoice numbers are following a what? A regular order, a consecutive order. Because it's the same company that is issuing this out. So you issued invoice one, invoice two, and invoice what? Three. So you've got your numbers there, and you've got your tax element, and then you've got your what? Your net. So one of these good days we're going to have to deal with um, the tax topic itself, eh? Right? As a standalone, so you don't have to worry about these things. Sales so returns the same then this cash book okay the money is that you received from your you know clients you have got that you've got the cash book in fact this one is a payment eh? you were paying who you paid uh, you paid AB, AB and company right yes you paid AB and company so this would actually fall under um, a let me just record here. Yeah? Under payables, eh? Because initially you bought on what? On credit, eh? So when you are paying, you show that. But if you are paying someone you bought on cash from, it has, should have reflected under this particular what column. But we also see that we also got some money for petty cash. You can see this is the 5,000. There are three zeros on top there. There's three zeros on top. So you have got all those. When it comes to receipts, you were receiving quite a number of uh, receipts. But it's very important for us to appreciate the fact that um, uh, this receipt is, um, I mean, this, this cash book is analyzed. Uh, again, there's a question in your book, perhaps. When you say analyzed cash book, we mean a cash book with different what, columns. Different columns. So which columns can you see there? You have got the column for sundry. This is money that we received from what? Different sources. We have got a column from receivables. This is the money that we receive from credit customers. You have got a column for cash sales. This is the money that you receive from those who, who pay, who buy from you on cash basis, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and I think that um, there was also supposed to be something like this. There is supposed to be capital. And capital, we can put it also still under Sandly, eh? because it doesn't come every time. So you have got all those. Okay, so there we go. Now for Rashid Entertainment, or Enterprise, not Entertainment, eh? Enterprise. We have got um, a person who got goods worth 20,000, but they paid in time. So they qualified for a discount of how much? About 10%. Uh, so instead of paying 20,000, how much did they pay? 18, yes, very important for us to see that. So the analyzed cash book must be appreciated aha uh -huh. so I'm almost done we said petty cash petty cash simply records what small payments is the responsibility of who the petty cashier and their supervisor all right or whoever they hand over to right and petty cash payments should be supported by supporting documents eh? payment vouchers as well as what source documents. So if you give someone money for taxi, they should come back with a receipt. But of course, there are so many Christians who fake taxi receipts every day. <laughs> They'll be forgiven, eh? There is no hell. Just imagine there's no hell. That's what they tell us. Imagine there's no hell, eh? There isn't hell. Document support is essential here. And then float. The petty cashier must be allocated with a specific sum of money, right? Um, uh, for instance, 5,000 for some companies might be the float. So that um, if the petty cashier is requesting for more money, they will base it on how much they need to top up in order to hit that 5,000, all right? So if the petty cashier has got 1,000, 
and their float is 5,000, they should only request for how much? A 4,000. They shouldn't over request. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we can deal with a lot of issues here, including security. Who is responsible for the security of the petty cash? <laughs> You'll be walking around with a big, big key. Never leave that key. Anyway. Then there's an aspect of signature. When it comes to signatures, approval, I mean, um, acknowledgement of, uh, you know, payments, petty cash, the petty cash here signature should never be seen anywhere on the petty cash voucher. So the only person, uh, the only person to sign on the petty cashier, cashier's document, the petty cash voucher, is the person receiving the money and perhaps the supervisor of the petty cashier, not the person who is handling the cash. Because those guys, they like doing pyramid schemes. You know what pyramid schemes are? <laughs> the revolving fund, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you wonder how they don't get caught. They even keep their jobs for several years. They know how they play their cards, eh? It's risky. Yes. <laughs> it is risky, but it is doable. Okay, so that's what you have there. Uh, what else can we discuss? So we're saying this is the responsibility of the petty cashier. If money goes missing, you'll be given an advance. Security, so you need to secure your cash. Away from what? Third party reach. You can be given a drawer which should have a key or a safe. I think it's better to ask for a safe. If the, you've been given an office as a petty cashier, make sure <laughs> that it has got a grill door. <laughs> Otherwise, some of your friends are aiming for your downfall. All right, document support, we said literally all payments unless in circumstances which, uh, you know, are quite unique. Uh, all payments must be supported by what? Petty cash vouchers and receipts, eh? Mm -hmm. Then you'll be given a float. You can't operate outside the float. Remember, some people cannot handle more than, <laughs> you know, money has got a way of speaking. Uh, then signature, we talked about the fact that on the petty cash voucher, there should be no signature for the what? For the petty cashier. Then the journal, I think we have discussed some of these points. Used for the correction of errors, period and adjustment posting. So, the lecture has done too much talking. I'm actually tired. So you can, uh, you can have that. I think uh, what I can do is um, I'll send this also on our WhatsApp platform, all right? So that you can attend to those, I think most of the things that we have dealt with here that I hear rather have been dealt with. So thank you very much. So you're going to send this book? Yes. Thank you very much. We'll send so that no one blames us for anything. Yeah.